Let's move on to the uh, 7 o'clock Eastern slate, the night games on Saturday. We got LSU versus Mississippi, two teams that don't like each other. Looks like uh, Old Miss is a plus 6.5 point underdog, 59.5 the total. This game will be aired on ESPN. Are you going with uh, the Bayou Bengals or with the Old Miss Rebels here? Yeah, I've been on uh, LSU the last couple of weeks. I'm not backing down now from a series perspective. LSU has won three of the last five over Ole Miss by 8.6 points per game. But Ole Miss has won the last two matchups over LSU in Oxford by 12 points per game. But I don't think it matters. I look at LSU's offense that's rushing the football for right around 193 yards on the ground. They're passing for 201 yards through the air. And their quarterback, Dan, Danny Etling, who's completing 59% of his passes, 1,252 yards, seven touchdowns, and one interception, seems to be gaining confidence. I think this is an LSU offense that has an identity over the last couple of weeks. And you look at LSU's defense now, in three straight weeks, Drew, they are holding opposing offenses to 143 passing yards per game and only one passing touchdown going up against Shea Patterson in that one-dimensional Ole Miss offense. I think that'll play a factor in this ballgame. Coupled with the fact of you look at LSU – LSU's third down defense over the last two weeks against games against Auburn and Florida. They're holding opposing offenses to five of 23 third down conversions. That's 21%. If they could force Shea Patterson and that offense into third down and long situations, I really think it favors LSU secondary. That's given up 170 passing yards per game. More importantly, when you look at Ole Miss from a defensive perspective, they got a blowout victory at home last week against Vanderbilt, but they still allowed 188 rushing yards on the ground. Prior to that, in the loss against Auburn, it was 326. Against Alabama, they allowed 365. So over the last three weeks, Ole Miss has allowed 293 rushing yards on the ground. I think that'll factor into this ballgame. I think LSU wins this ballgame convincingly. They have a bye week the following week and then face Alabama. I think they're hitting on all cylinders. Look for a, a, anywhere from 14 to 20-point LSU victory on the road in Oxford this coming weekend. And Joe, just to follow up, you bring you bring up LSU playing a lot better right now. What about this total? It opened 55 and a half, now bet up to 59 and a half. Do you agree with that move towards the over? Could you see a lot of points? I can. The only issue I would have with the over that would concern me is if LSU can run on Ole Miss. If they can run on Ole Miss and wear down that defensive front, it might take ball control drives, which will keep Shea Patterson on the sideline. So it could be a one-sided affair where LSU routes Ole Miss 38 to 10, but the under comes in. So that's the only concern I have for this matchup. It is a contrast in styles. Ole Miss, if they could dictate tempo and, and force Danny Etling to match them score for score, then I could see the over coming in. But if LSU could dictate the tempo, run early on that Ole Miss defensive front, could keep Shea Patterson on the sidelines and not lead to a lot of points in this ballgame. Yeah, could could be uh, running the clock there a lot if they get the lead. All right, we got one more at this time slot, 7 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday night. USC versus Notre Dame. This game on NBC, 401-402, the rotation number on the betting card. Looks like Notre Dame's minus 3.5 point favorites across the board. Totals wise, bet DSI 66.5, bet online 66 if you're looking to bet the total. Joe, how are you betting this one? Yeah, I really like USC in this ballgame. Now, from a series perspective, Notre Dame has won three of the last five by 7.6 points per game. USC picked this victory up in the Coliseum by 18 points last year. But I look at two factors in this ballgame. I look at USC's offense. They're averaging 180 yards on the ground in terms of rushing the football, passing for right around 296 yards through the air with quarterback Sam Darnold. That's completing 63% of his passes. 2,063 yards, 15 touchdowns, nine interceptions. But the offensive line of USC playing very well through seven games, they've only allowed 10 total sacks. They're going to be going up against a Notre Dame secondary that's allowing 231 passing yards per game this season in 2017. And when you think about their schedule, teams like Boston College, teams like Temple, Georgia, Michigan State, 
uh, Miami of Ohio and North Carolina, those aren't prolific passing offenses. Coupled with the fact of you look at USC's defense entering this ballgame, they enter this matchup with 23 total sacks. The way you have to challenge USC is over the top and challenge their secondary. When you look at Brandon Winbush, I mean, he's only completing 52% of his passes, and this is a Notre Dame offense that's only pa- averaging 168 passing yards through the air. They're a run-heavy offense that's pounding the rock for 308 yards on the ground. And when you look at the strength of schedule to this point, Notre Dame is 5-1 and one against opponents with a combined overall record of 14-20, and 20, or a 411 winning percentage. When you look at USC's body of work, they're sitting at 6-1. and one. They've beaten teams like like Texas, Western Michigan, and Stanford, and their six wins have come against a combined overall record of opponents with a 21-19 and 19 record, or 525. I think that'll factor into this ballgame. USC's ability to convert on third downs, they're converting 46% as an offense and holding opposing offenses to 36% on third downs. You look at Notre Dame's offense, only converting 38% of the time, To me, that's the difference. The speed of USC gets this victory, and I think they get a double-digit win on the road in South Bend. I think USC is the better team, even though record-wise they seem even. To me, USC is the superior team and get a double-digit victory in South Bend this coming Saturday. Wow, Joe liking the Trojans, even on the money line. But for record-keeping purposes, we'll go uh, USC plus three and a half, so you get that extra hook there on the road just to give a rundown we got northwestern plus one and a half pit plus eight asu plus nine and a half lsu minus six and a half and usc plus three and a half so going with four dogs one favorite on this week's card joe joe went three and two last week 17 and 12 overall this season so joe making some money for the listeners i know we all appreciate that find joe on twitter at go for the two his work at go for the two.com Joe, anything else uh, college football-wise you want to get out there before we shut this down? No, I gave five. I mean, I think I'm tapped out for this coming Saturday. I might have a little more a little bit later as the week progresses, but right now I'm sticking to my guns. I like the five that we just spoke about. Cool, Joe. And, uh, hey, just off the topic here, uh, trying to get a couple people's opinion. UCF beats Navy, runs the table, beats uh, USF, what, November 24th. Do they deserve to be in the... uh, playoff conversation in your opinion well it's always good to talk about teams like ucf usf and even san diego state even though they're coming off a disappointing loss last week uh i think they deserve to be in the in the conversation we have to see what you know the top four teams in the country do teams like alabama a team like penn state uh tcu uh you could throw ohio state penn state michigan all of them into the mix But at the end of the day, it does come down to quality and body of work. And at this point in the season, even though they'll knock off possibly a a solid Navy team and run the table against USF, you still have to take the power group of five teams and consider those over UCF. But it's great conversation. It's why we talk about college football each and every week. Yeah, for sure. Great sport in general. And Joe, we appreciate it. And we'll see you uh, next week. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.